So, since I haven't done one of these in a long time, 2020 just so happened to suck. We didn't camp a lot last year. I'm gonna put together a quick video for this trip where we are going to Mills Canyon Campgrounds somewhere in northeastern New Mexico. Never been there. It's supposed to be 4x4 access only. It's, uh, it is a like government run campsite, but it's very not. They have bathrooms, but no running water, etc., etc. And it's alongside a river, so hopefully we can just kind of find a spot that isn't one of those and do a little bit of relaxing. This is our first trip of 2021. So hot damn to that. And one other thing that I'm gonna do is kind of, once we've set up camp, go over everything that we've put on this car. I know a lot of people had questions about the rack, how all that's holding up, about the awning, how my fix is holding up, the rooftop tent, etc., etc., etc. And I haven't really been able to answer those questions. So I will make a video showcasing kind of everything that we've done, modified, changed, and or fixed how it's working over the last three seasons of camping and uh, just kind of a little three-year check-in on everything. So stay tuned for that as well. But yeah, bring it back to Let's Camping. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Let the montage roll. So basically, this is a three and a half hour drive from the city center of Albuquerque. You blast up I-25 until you get to Wagon Wheel, you exit, then you go to some small town, you take a left on Highway 39, and then we're about to exit. Mile. Turn left uh, onto Mills Canyon Road. Like it said, we're about to exit on Mills Canyon Road in a half a mile, and then I believe it turns to off-road not shortly after that. I'll keep you updated on what it's like. And of course, we haven't seen a car for miles and miles and miles, and as soon as we get to the turnoff, there it is. So, if that's how this weekend is gonna go, I may not be recommending this place <laughs> otherwise. But yeah, the dirt road <laughs> turns into dirt immediately off the highway. And there's a pretty scenic windmill. Oh, it bumps me out that we ran into the only traffic and they all turned into this road. Sick. And it's gonna be five miles of what seems to be pretty nicely groomed dirt road. I mean, that is a minivan up there, so if they can make it, pretty much anybody can. weekend so may whatever the heck it is or yeah 28th or something like that 64 degrees out it's partly cloudy with some sun it rained earlier today apparently uh, it's supposed to rain a little bit tomorrow and all day sunday so this could be an interesting trip there are two campgrounds there's this one right here and then there's the one down below uh, so for people without four-wheel drive vehicles, it says trailers and RVs, not recommended. Uh, you can go up here where that minivan, we were hoping it would go, but it is not, unfortunately, and it is going down to the actual canyon itself. That's okay. So the road's actually pretty nice. There hasn't been any bumps, so really even a reason to air down tires but we still have a couple of miles to go, I think, at least two more miles of this, so we shall see. It is pretty. Well, I'd go for it too. Yeah, it's a nice scenic route. 
Not a very challenging trail, to say the least. Even the dog agrees. But it is pretty. Archer, we get it. It's easy. If you designed it, it'd be gnarly. We get it. Switch back. It's definitely one of the more groomed trails we've ever tried to go down, that's for sure. Oh, look at this tiny water crossing. Let me zoom in on that. Okay, guys, here we go. I don't think, oh, we made it. Dang. <laughs> Extreme four by four adventures. I'm gonna laugh if that minivan got the last spot available. The orchard, it says, on the sign. Can't read that because the window's dirty. Nice view, and you can see the river. Kind of, a little glimpse of it. There's a better view of it. It's a very nicely groomed, but cool trail with some steep drops. So far, difficult rating out of 10, I'm gonna give it a 1.5. I guess those that were scared of heights might have an issue driving on it, but other than that, it's very well maintained, groomed, almost not even bumpy. It is a dirt road, of course, but... This one just has a bunch of different animals and some dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Watch out for dinosaurs. <laughs> That's what we need to know. So we have arrived at the Mills Canyon campground. Um, we're just gonna kind of cruise in. Take the next right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just look. Like I said, it's Memorial Day weekend. We expected it to be super crowded, um, but it doesn't look like it's going to be. They do have bathrooms, but there's no running water. Uh, they've got spots for trailers. They've got... Yeah. So these are the non-primitive camping Your destination campgrounds. Is on the left. Thank you, Google. And close that out. Huh? So there's plenty of spots available. I don't think we're gonna try to camp over here. We're gonna try to go somewhere primitive. But yeah. And then this is kind of down by the river, as close as you can get, I do believe. So now we're just kind of coming out of the campground, hanging right, just to kind of see what there is in regards to doing some primitive camping away from the bathrooms and the other people. So if we can find a spot, I will update thusly. We came down a little bit and there is indeed an actual river crossing, which we are gonna do just because we can. It doesn't seem to be too extreme at all. Pretty calm water, and I believe it's concrete underneath it, but let's see. Yeah, it's not too bad. A little, little bumpy, some rocks, but all in all, a pretty decently easy river crossing.
Ah, darn. Now we limited a lot of people. So let's see what we can find over here. A little more off-roady over here, which is cool. Do a little bit of flexing. Not much, but a little bit. Definitely more off the beaten path, that's for sure. We drove down the road after crossing the river a little bit and hung a right off the main trail and ended up coming to this beauty of a camp spot. It's nice because the sun goes behind the mountain over there a little earlier, so it's not brutal hot all day. There is some cover for bathroom usage, uh, and we're not in the middle of where all the people are gonna be. So this is an absolutely fantastic little spot. Even got a little bit of room for a fire pit. Um, probably gonna set up really close to where I just parked and start breaking camp, get a little time lapse going. Pretty pumped on this spot. Finished breaking camp, the wife was hungry, and so we cooked. <laughs> Oops, I just dropped some. Beyond Meat Tacos? Okay. Pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. It's dark, our campfire is finished, we've been watching satellites and enjoying the amazing sky that we're seeing out here. And it has become time to utilize the lighting that I installed on this thing. So as you can see, it does quite the job of lighting up the kitchen and quite a ways out into the darkness. So if you do need to pee at night, we have this handy dandy remote. And basically you just click off, on. So we keep this hung in our tent. And then we have the two emergency lights on this side for getting in and out of the tent when you need to. And again, goes off into the darkness in case you need to go pee. So these have been working absolutely fantastic. I haven't had to change the battery in this remote in over three years now since I put those on there. Um, so that's pretty impressive. It doesn't wear down the battery because they're super low wattage LEDs, but boy, do they put out some light. It's funny because it has a cutoff because of the tent, but it's, uh, yeah, pretty fantastic. So absolutely love these things. Cheap, Amazon, whatever this was, mixed with those. And I just wired everything up to a relay and then put both sides on there so that we could have a lot of light when we're going to clean up camp or going pee. Rock and roll. All right, so I guess it's time to do the old walk around. As you can hear, probably, it's it's a little bit windy. I'd say maybe 15 to 18 miles an hour. Um, 
post repairs, the awning is doing absolutely fine with this amount of wind, so is the tent. Uh, gonna give a rundown of basically kind of everything. So this is the Yescom awning, the original one that I had that flipped over and I had to repair with cast material. I put new threads on there so that it can go through. Um, everything else is still good. Nothing actually got bent other than like this little piece right here. But that's not a big deal. So those actually worked really well. There's another video I have on how to repair that if that does happen to you. Um, the guidelines that we use are the same. Even the stakes are the same. Just make sure that the ground is solid because what happened to ours was it ripped out of the ground and then the whole thing folded itself up and broke. This is Walmart. I think Ozark Trail and you can also buy the little package of all of the bungee cords and it's a perfect toilet paper roll holder so you always know exactly where the toilet paper is because that's important it's got a couple of clippy boys for lanterns and citronella candles which we have like five of to keep the mosquitoes and bugs out I mentioned the lights last night. Uh, when I originally put these LEDs on this side of the car, I used hot glue gun. And the first time we went camping after it got really cold, I opened it and the LED just fell out. So I went back through and actually JB welded it every eight inches or so all the way across. And it is now held on for two solid years. What else? Um, we got our Ozark Trail Walmart cooler. That thing keeps ice fresh for days. And then a little one for the actual beers. Keep the beers in there, separate from all the food stuff. We've got this Amazon table that we use to actually eat off of. That table we got at Walmart. It's super small, it's super lightweight. We got a little Coleman stove couple of other bins and that's really it for the actual camping supplies of course the all-important coffee maker right there um, the little burner that you can see right there uh, you just put that onto a propane tank and let it eat cook coffee on that while we're cooking the breakfast on that it works out pretty well we've got these little sport near chairs we got these from wish um, Hers, unfortunately, bit the dust, and so now she has a moon lens. With the pocket. And hers has a pocket, mine does not. But mine's still holding on strong. Um, these were like $8 from Wish. Hers was like 14 So those things have been working out pretty well as well. Um, I have my Crazy Beaver shovel for uh, making poop holes and covering poop holes and putting out campfires and digging campfire pits. Got it powder coated to match my shorts because that's what's important. We've got the Fisker ax just in case we need more firewood for any reason or need to chop things. These are knockoffs of the mud tracks ones and their main purpose so far, we haven't gotten this thing stuck yet, but when we come to a campground that's not level, we either put one side up on these or we put the front up on these or the back up on these and they level the rooftop tent out. So it's a lot easier to sleep when you're not rolling downhill the whole time or rolling to one side. Um, next up, I got this super, super cheap solar panel and also bought a solar panel controller. I mean, this thing was like $12.99 and it keeps the battery topped off. So when we do use those LED lights that are out there on the side, we don't have to worry about it because it charges the next day. On top of that, it's got some ports and we just keep the phones topped off. 
all underneath here and just put the little alligator clips on put this on the hood and it usually charges around 14 volts when it's in full blast of the sun which it is right now and I got some quick disconnects I made so that you can just kind of plug and unplug that as you need it but that thing works awesome and could be a lifesaver in dire straits we've got our camp solar shower from Seattle Sports another Amazon purchase you leave this thing out for about three hours, the water gets up to around 90 something degrees and becomes either a nice way to wash your hands, do dishes, and or take a shower. Uh, I got the high lift still mounted up there. These have been absolutely outstandingly awesome. So these are the 45 degree bends that I got at Home Depot. Put those on, put the quick fists on, haven't had one problem with them being loose, rattling, falling off. Uh, these have been absolutely fantastic and super cheap. Dogs are already asleep underneath, finding some shade because it's kind of warm out. Um, we got another one of those strap things that goes across here where we usually hang all of the stuff that carries things. Um, just a nice place to have those. There's the other lights that I have mounted up. And then of course the Smitty Belt tent has been doing pretty well. It's rattled a couple of nuts and bolts loose, which we've had to replace over the years. Um, but otherwise, this tent has been absolutely solid. It's got plenty of room for both of us and the dog. And this is the small one. That's where we keep the light clicker for when you need to go pee, so it's right there. The only thing that we don't like about this is how moist it gets inside. Uh, when it gets cold and then the sun hits it, it really starts to like drip moisture from the inside of this thing. Uh, but it does have that LED light back there. You just put a battery pack in, turn that light on so you got light at night. Uh, you can close all the flaps, close the doors, keep it nice and warm or keep it nice and open. It's supposed to rain tonight, so we're leaving the rain fly on. But this thing has now survived probably 25 camping trips. All this stuff has over the last three years. And of course the Prinsu rack, which is underneath there, holding all of this crap on. So yeah, that's the three year check-in since I made those last videos. I should have done this a lot sooner, but I didn't. Um, you can keep this thing going for a long time and it provides much needed shade. You just kind of have to chase it. Like in the morning it was over here and then it slowly comes this way and we'll be over there this evening. But that's quite all right. We don't mind because it's a full eight feet of shade. And if you really needed to, you could shorten these poles like we're probably gonna have to do tonight when it rains and have that kind of slope the water off nice and easy. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the update on this old rig that has really, really, really done us well over the last three years, and it was pretty inexpensive. The Yescom awning I think was like 120 bucks shipped. The Prinsu rack was expensive, but all the lights on it are cheap. The solar system was cheap. The mud tracks were knockoffs, so they're cheap. The Crazy Beaver was expensive. The axe was okay. Uh, the high lift is a Smitty built, so that was cheap. The tent we got off Craigslist for 450 bucks. Yeah, that's a pretty budget camping slash overlanding setup. And we use the living crap out of it. Onwards and upwards to relaxation. So less than a, I would say 15 minute hike from where we were. Across the river, wearing some flip flops. And now have hiked over to the ruins of one Mr. Wills, who had an orchard down here, apparently over there in a valley. And now this is all that's left of his house, ranch, thing, whatever you want to call it. And there's my dog taking a shit. Have to clean that up. Of course, he pooped inside of a plant. So yeah. There's a couple of ruins out here, which is pretty cool. Uh, some information signs right there. And it's a quick hike from where we were. You just have to cross a little bit of river, go across a small valley. No big deal. So that was his main house. 
apparently. They came out here and actually fixed it up and stabilized it. A bunch of the other houses on the property are missing. There was a blacksmithy and some other things. Um, not sure exactly what this one was, but it's still barely standing and it's pretty cool. There's a canoe down yonder. And I'm assuming some pieces of the old house. I'm not even sure, but yeah, canoe. Pretty cool spot, nice hike, peaceful. So we did a little bit of hiking down the road instead of going over the river crossing, which would be that. So this would be a left at the fork. And we're just kind of looking for cool camping spots and came across this one. It's got a little table right there that somebody had made for people that don't want to cross the river and or parties greater than just a couple of people. This is a pretty fantastic spot. So yeah, not bad. What do you think, bud? It's like, I don't give a shit. So we stayed on the, the old left fork all the way to where it ended, which isn't that far. And we came across this epic spot. Got a little area for a campfire, got plenty of room for quite a few people. And then you have the river literally right there and this amazing view of the canyon. So I think we picked our spot a little too quick. We still got a nice spot, but it's not the spot. And I think if we come back here, this will be the spot. Worm. Actually, it's more like a quarter inch worm. We do indeed have a storm rolling in. You can hear the thunder. There it is. So, we've kind of consolidated everything, put the tent at an angle so the water doesn't pool up, and yeah. We should be all right. Still hang out in there, still cook if we need to. Just cleaned everything up and get it ready because we don't want to be doing that all tomorrow. But yeah, still epic spot. I do love this place. If we do end up coming back here again, we'll definitely hit up that river spot that's over there and uh, just enjoy the living hell out the river. Feeling like we're part of Red Dead Redemption. Stout. Finally starting to rain just a little bit. Got a lot of thunder still happening. Pissed off hawk. So I shut the time lapse down. It's probably time to crawl into the tent and play some board games. And while we wait out the storm, we're playing a little Stranger Things Monopoly, because why not? The thunder is rolling. Rain is picking up. Archer is chilling. Look, man, I wish I was getting cactus stuck in my foot right now. About to be rich. You're only adding 20 for what I bought? No, I'm not going to sell it for 20. Storm got a little bit crazy. Uh, some lightning crashed down right outside the tent. I think it took out the tree. We're going to have to inspect that in the morning because there's no way in hell I'm going out there. This guy's terrified. It's been non-stop thunder and lightning 
Uh, quite a bit of rain, but the rain's not even the bad part, so we're just going to try to sleep it off. We finished our Monopoly game, and uh, now it's time to try and sleep with all the loud thundering noises. So as you can hear, the rain is quite loud on this tent. Um, which makes it kind of difficult to sleep. Uh, kept us pretty dry throughout this storm though, so no complaints there. You can see how bright the light is. You just need to hook it up to a USB power supply. Um, we got drinks and snacks up here because we're probably going to be up here for the long haul. But uh, yeah, finally crashing out. The lightning seems to have stopped a little bit. Thunder's still going strong. Um, yeah. Try to catch some Z's in this drum set of a tent. Woke up this morning to a beautiful day. And some visitors just checking the scene out. Hey guys. Just cruising. Alright, we get it. Catch you on the flip side. It got a little rambunctious last night and I ended up having to put the awning up and pack most of the stuff away during a brief interlude of the rain. But still prominent winds, that's okay. Now we have less to pack up to head on home. Everything packed up, everything's ready to go. We've got all of our trash, we're making sure we're not leaving anything. Campfire is well put out. Just one last sweep to make sure we're not trashing the place. And it looks like we're good to go. Sun's finally coming out and we're gonna go back across that river. Oh, I did forget something. Hey, hey. So we're gonna go back across that river and head on home. Sometimes you just gotta air out the nether regions. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? Oh, there, that's better. So, there's something we completely missed when we came into the valley was yonder building that's right there. We're gonna have to hike to that next time we come down because I believe that area over yonder was the orchard. So I'm assuming that was used to either house somebody over here to pick all of the fruits and stuff, but who knows? So it just gives us something to do next time. We'll hike over there instead. A couple of river crossings, maybe we'll drive. Who knows? <laughs>